Oh dear, assembled Vaishnavas, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the live studios of The Haven, which is located in Hythe, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. And we're dutifully trying to keep the sound vibration going, the Shabda Brahman, the Absolute Truth, the sound that can purify the ether and the hearts of the conditioned souls. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram uh, by Srila Sanatan Goswami tells it like it is. It goes like this. Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O Nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwanduditaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life, heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana man nisdadaga mad bhagya mad anandana mostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu ta dayin, atini chocheta kada, hanamuncha kadachin mam, prem na rit kanta yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the 11th chapter of the 5th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and we had, we're having the pleasure of hearing Jad Bharat instruct King Rahugana. And we're starting with um, text 12. The individual soul, bereft of Krishna consciousness, has many ideas and activities created in the mind by the external energy. They have been existing since time immemorial. Sometimes they are manifest in the waking state and in the, and the dream state. But during deep sleep, unconsciousness or trance, they disappear. A person who is liberated in this life, Jivan Mukta, can see all these things vividly. Purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 13.3, Chetragyam Chapimam Vidhi Sarva Chetreshu Bharata. There are two kinds of Chetragya, or living beings. One is the individual living being, and the other is the supreme living being. The ordinary living being knows about his body to some extent, but the supreme. Paramatma knows the condition 
of all bodies. The individual living being is localized and the Supreme, Paramatma, is all-pervading. In this shloka, the word Chetragya refers to an ordinary living being, not the Supreme Living Being. This ordinary living being is of two kinds, Nitya Bada or Nitya Mukta. One is eternally conditioned and the other eternally liberated. The eternally liberated living beings are in, that, are in the Vaikuntha Jagat, the spiritual world, and they never fall into the material world. Those in the material world are conditioned souls, nitya badha. The nitya badhas can become liberated by controlling the mind, because the cause of conditioned life is the mind. When the mind is trained and the soul is not under the mind's control, the soul can be liberated even in this material world. When it is liberated, one is called Jivan Mukta. A Jivan Mukta knows how he can become conditioned. In the, a Jivan Mukta knows how he has become conditioned. Therefore, therefore, he tries to purify himself and return home, back to Godhead. The eternally conditioned soul is eternally conditioned because he is controlled by the mind. The conditioned state and liberated state are compared to the sleeping, unconscious state and the awakened state. Those who are sleeping and unconscious are eternally conditioned, but those who are awake understand that they are eternally part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Therefore, even in this, even in this material world, they engage in Krishna service. As confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami, Iha Yasya Harir Dasye. If one takes to Krishna's service, he is liberated, even though he appears to be a conditioned soul within the material world. Jivan Mukta, Sauchate. In any condition, one is to be considered liberated if his only business is to serve. Krishna. Text 13 and 14. <clears throat> there are two kinds of Chetragya, the living entity, as explained above and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is explained as follows. He is the all-pervading cause of creation. He is full in himself and is not dependent on others. He is perceived by hearing and direct perception. He is self-effulgent and does not experience birth, death, old age or disease. He is the controller of all the demigods, beginning with Lord Brahma. He is called Narayana, and he is the shelter of living entities after the annihilation of this material world. He is full of all opulences, and he is the resting place of everything material. He is therefore known as Vasudeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By his own potency, he is present within the hearts of all living entities, just as the air or vital force is within the bodies of, of all beings, moving and non-moving. In this way, he controls the body. In his partial feature, the Supreme Personality of Godhead enters all bodies and controls them. Purport. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, 15.15. Sarvasya chaham riti sanavishto mataks mitir jnanam apoanam cha. Every living being is controlled by the Supreme 
living being, Paramatma, who resides within everyone's heart. He is the Purusha, the Purusha Avatar, who creates this material world. The first Purusha Avatar is Mahavishnu, and that Mahavishnu is the plenary portion of the plenary portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Krishna's first expansion is Baladeva, and his next expansions are Vasudeva, Sankrashana, Aniruddha, and Prajumna. Vasudeva is the original cause of the Brahma Jyoti, and the Brahma Jyoti <clears throat> is the expansion of the rays of the body of Vasudeva. Yasya Prabha Prabhavato Jagadanda Koti Kotish Vashesha Vasudadi Vibhuti Bhinam Tad Brahma Nishkala Manantam Ashesha Bhutam Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Vajami I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is endowed with great power. The glowing effulgence of his transcendental form is the impersonal Brahman, which is absolute, complete, and unlimited, and which displays the varieties of countless planets with their different opulences in millions and millions of universes. Brahma, Brahma Sanghita 540 the Supreme Personality of Godhead is thus described in Bhagavad Gita. Maya tatimidam sarvam jagat avyakna murtina matstani sarvabhutani nachaham te shavastitaha. By me and my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Bhagavad Gita 9.4 This is the position of the plenary expansions of Krishna as the all-pervading Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Prajumna, and Aniruddha. Text 15 <clears throat> My dear King Rahugana, as long as the conditioned soul accepts the material body and is not freed from the contamination of material enjoyment and as long as he does not conquer his six enemies and come to the platform of self-realization by awakening his spiritual knowledge he has to wander among various pla in different places he has to wander among different places and different species of life in this material world purport when one's mind is absorbed in the material conception, he thinks that he belongs to a particular nation, family, country, or creed. These are called the upadis, designations, and one has to become freed from them, sarvopadi vinirmuktam. As long as one is not freed, he has to continue conditioned life in material existence. The human form of life is meant for cleansing away these misconceptions. If this is not done, one has to repeat the cycle of birth and death and thus suffer all material conditions. Text 16 The soul's designation, the mind, is the cause of all tribulations in the material world. As long as this fact is unknown to the conditioned living entity, he has to accept the miserable condition of the material body and wander within this universe in different positions. Because the mind is affected by disease, lamentation, illusion, attachment, greed, and enmity, it creates bondage and a false sense of intimacy within this material world. I got to read that last sentence again. It's so good. Huh? Because the mind is affected by disease, lamentation, illusion, attachment, greed, and enmity, 
It creates bondage and a false sense of intimacy within this material world. Purport. Huh. The mind is the cause of both material bondage and liberation. The impure mind thinks, I am this body. The pure mind knows that he is not the material body. Therefore, the mind is considered to be the root of all material designations. Until the living entity is aloof from the association and contaminations of this material world, the mind will be absorbed in such material things as birth, death, disease, illusion, attachment, greed, and enmity. In this way, the living entity is conditioned and he suffers material miseries. Text 17 This uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy of the living entity. If one neglects it or gives it a chance, it will grow more and more powerful and will become victorious. Although it is not factual, it is very strong. It covers the constitutional position of the soul. O king, please try to conquer this mind by the weapon of service to the lotus feet of the spiritual master and of the supreme personality of Godhead. Do this with great care. Purport There is one easy weapon with which, with which the mind can be conquered. Disobedience. Oh, how good is this? Huh? There is one easy weapon with which the mind can be conquered. Disobedience. The mind is always telling us to do this or that. Therefore, we should be very expert in disobeying the mind's orders. Gradually, the mind should be trained to obey the orders of the soul. It is not that one should obey the orders of the mind. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say that to control the mind, one should beat it with shoes many times just after awakening and again before going to sleep. In this way, one can control the mind. This is the instruction of all the Shastras. If one does not do so, one is doomed to follow the dictations of the mind. Another bona fide process is to abide strictly by the orders of the spiritual master and engage in the Lord's service. Then the mind will, will be automatically controlled. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has instructed Srila Rupa Goswami, Ramanda Bhamiti Kon Bhagavan Jeev. Guru Krishna Prasadi Poi Bhakti Lata Bij C. C. Madhya 19 151 When one receives the seed of devotional service by the mercy of the Guru and Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead one's real life begins if one abides by the orders of the spiritual master by the grace of Krishna he is freed from service to the mind. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fifth canto, eleventh chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Jad Bharat instructs King Rahugana. All glories to Jad Bharat, Bharat, who is perfect at disobeying his mind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay. Moving on to chapter 12. The conversation between Maharaj Ruhugana and Jud Bharat. Summary. <clears throat> because Maharaj Ruhugana was still doubtful about his enlightenment, he asked the Brahmana Jud Bharat to repeat his instructions and clarify ideas he could not understand. In this chapter, 
Maharaj Rahugana offers his respectful obeisances to Jad Bharata, who was concealing his real position. The king could understand by his speech how exalted and advanced he was in spiritual knowledge. He, was, he very much regretted his offense against him. Maharaj Rahugana was bitten by the serpent of, serpent of ignorance, but was cured by the nectarian words of Jad Bharat. Later, because he was doubtful about the subjects discussed, he made further inquiries, one question after another. First, he wanted to be released from the offense he had committed at the lotus feet of Jad Bharat. Maharaj Rahukana was somewhat unhappy at not being able to grasp Jad Bharat's instructions, which were full of meaning that could not be understood by a materialistic person. Therefore, Jad Bharat repeated his instructions more clearly. He said that on the surface of the globe, all living entities, moving and unmoving, were but transformations of the earth in different ways. The king was very proud of his king's body, but that body was simply another transformation of the earth. Out of his false prestige, the king was misbehaving toward the palanquin carrier as a master toward a servant, and he was actually very unkind to other living entities. Consequently, King Rahugana was unfit to give protection to the citizens, and because he was ignorant, he was unfit to be counted among advanced philosophers. Everything in the material world is but a transformation of the earth, although things have different names according to their transformations. Actually, the varieties are one and the same, and ultimately, all these varieties are vanquished into atoms. Nothing is permanent in this material world. The variety of things and their distinctions are simply mental concoctions. The absolute truth is beyond illusion and is manifest in three features, impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ultimate realization of the Absolute Truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, called Vasudeva by His devotees. Unless one is blessed with the dust from the feet of a pure devotee on his head, one cannot possibly become a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jad Bharat also told about his own previous birth and informed the king that by the grace of the Lord, he still remembered all the incidents of his past life. Due to the activities of his past life, Jad Bharat was being very cautious and was therefore assuming the characteristics of a deaf and dumb man to avoid mingling with the material world. Association with the material modes of nature is very powerful. The bad association of materialistic men can be avoided only in the association of devotees. In the association of devotees, one is given an opportunity to render devotional service in nine different ways. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandam, Dasyanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam. In this way, in the association of devotees, one can pass over material association, cross over the ocean of nations, and return home back to Godhead. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Text 1 <clears throat> King Rahugana said, O most exalted personality, you are not different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By the influence of your true self, 
all kinds of contradiction in the Shastras have been removed. In the dress of a friend, of a Brahmana, you are hiding your transcendental, blissful position. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Purport From the Brahma Sanghita, we understand that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of all causes, Sarva Karana Karanam. Vishabhadev was the direct incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes. His son, Bharat Maharaj, who was now acting as the Brahmana Jad Bharat, had received his body from the cause of all causes. Therefore, he is addressed as Karana Vigrahaya. Text 2 O best of the Brahmanas, my body is filled with dirty things and my vision has been bitten by the serpent of pride. Due to my material conceptions, I am diseased. Your nectarian instructions are the proper medicines for one suffering from such a fever and they are cooling waters for one scorched by the heat. Purport the conditioned soul has a body full of dirty things, bones, blood, urine, stool, and so forth. Nonetheless, the most intelligent men in this material world think that they are these combinations of blood, bone, urine, and stool. If this is so, why can't other intelligent men be made with these ingredients, which are so readily available? <laughs> The entire world is going on under the bodily conception and creating a hellish condition unfit for any gentleman's living. The instructions given to King Rahugana by Jad Bharat are very valuable. They are like the medicine that can save one from a snake bite. The Vedic instructions are like nectar and cool water for one suffering from scorching heat. Text 3 Whatever doubts I have about a particular subject matter, I shall ask you about I should I shall ask you about later. For the time being, these mysterious yoga instructions you have given me for self realization appear very difficult to understand. Please repeat them in a simple way so that I can understand them. My mind is very inquisitive and I want to understand this clearly. Purport The Vedic literature instructs Tasmat Gurum Prapadyeta Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam An intelligent man must be very inquisitive to know the transcendental science deeply. Therefore, one must approach a guru, a spiritual master. Although Jad Bharat explained everything to Maharaj Rahugana, it appears that his intelligence was not perfect enough to understand clearly. He therefore requested a further explanation. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.34, Tadvidi Panipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya the student must approach a spiritual master and surrender unto him fully, pranipatena. He must also question him in order to understand his instructions, pariprashnena. One should not only surrender to the spiritual master, but also render loving service unto him, sevaya, so that the spiritual master will be pleased with the student and explain the transcendental subject matter more clearly. A challenging spirit before the spiritual master should be avoided if one is at all interested in learning the Vedic instructions in depth. Text 4 O Master of Yogic Power, you said that fatigue resulting from moving the body here and there is appreciated by direct perception 
but actually there is no fatigue. It, is, it simply exists as a matter of formality. By such inquiries and answers, no one can come to the conclusion of the absolute truth. Because of your presentation of this statement, my mind is a little disturbed. Purport Formal inquiries and answers about the bodily conception do not constitute knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Knowledge of the Absolute Truth is quite different from the formal understanding of bodily pains and pleasures. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna informs Arjuna that the pains and pleasures experienced in relation to the body are temporary. They come and go. One should not be disturbed by them, but should tolerate them and continue with spiritual realization. Text 5 and 6 The self-realized Brahmana Jad Bharat said, <clears throat> Among the various material con combinations and permutations, there are various forms and earthly transformations. For some reason, these move on the sur surface of the earth and are called palanquin carriers. <laughs> Those material transformations which do not move are gross material objects, like stones. In any case, the material body is made of earth and stone in the form of feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, torso, throat, and head. Upon the shoulders is the wooden palanquin, and within the palanquin is the so-called king of Sovira. <laughs> the body of the king is simply another transformation of earth, but within that body, your lordship is situated and falsely thinking that you are the king of the state of Sovira. <laughs> Purport After analyzing the material bodies of the palanquin carrier and the palanquin passenger, Judd Bart concludes that the real living force is the living entity. The living entity is the offshoot or offspring of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, within this material world, among moving and non-moving things, the real principle is Lord Vishnu. Due to His presence, everything is working, and there are actions and reactions. One who understands Lord Vishnu as the original cause of everything is to be understood to be perfectly situated in knowledge. Although he was proud, falsely proud of being a king, King Rahugana was not really situated in knowledge. Therefore, he was rebuking the palanquin, the palanquin carriers, including the self-realized Brahmana, Jad Bharat. This is the first accusation Jad Bharat made against the king, who was daring to talk to a learned Brahmana from the flimsy ground of ignorance identifying everything with matter. King Rahugana argued that the living entity is within the body and that when the body is fatigued, the living entity within must therefore be suffering. It is clearly explained in the following verses that the living entity does not suffer due to the body's fatigue. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti gives an example of a child heavily decorated with ornaments. Although the child's body is very delicate, he does not feel fatigue, nor do the parents think that his ornaments should be taken away. The living entity has nothing to do with bodily pains and pleasures. These are simply mental concoctions. An intelligent man will find the original cause of everything. Material combinations and permutations may be a matter of fact in worldly dealings, but actually the living force, the soul, has nothing to do with them. Those who are material ups materially upset take care of the body and manufacture 
Daridra, Narayana, poor Narayana. However, it is not a fact that the soul or super-soul becomes poor simply because the body is poor. These are the statements of ignorant people. The soul and super-soul are always apart from bodily pleasure and pain. The soul and the super-soul are always apart from bodily pleasure and pain. Text 7. It is a fact, however, that these innocent people carrying your palanquin without payment are certainly suffering due to this injustice. Their condition is very lamentable because you have forcibly engaged them in carrying your palanquin. This proves that you are cruel and unkind, yet due to false prestige you were thinking that you were protecting the citizens. This is ludicrous. You were such a fool that you could, uh, could not have adored as a great man. You were such a fool that you could not have been adored as a great man in an assembly of persons advanced in knowledge. Purport. King Rahugana was proud of being king and he felt he had the right to control the citizens as he liked. But actually, he was engaging men in carrying the palanquin without payment and therefore he was causing them trouble without reason. Nonetheless, the king was thinking that he was the protector of the citizens. Actually, the king should be the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For this reason, he is called Naradevata, the Lord among human beings. However, when a king thinks that because he is the head of the state, he can utilize the citizens for his sense gratification, he is in error. Such an attitude is not appreciated by learned scholars. According to the Vedic principles, the king should be advised by learned sages, brahmanas, and scholars who advise him according to the injunctions given in the Dharma Shastra. The duty of the king is to follow these instructions. Learned circles do not appreciate the king's utilizing public endeavor for their own benefit. His duty is to give protection to the citizens instead. The king should not become such a rogue that he exploits the citizens for his own benefit. It is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam that in Kali Yuga, the heads of government will be plunderers and thieves. These thieves and plunderers take the money and property of the public by force or connivance. Therefore it is said, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Rajanyaya Nirgrinaya Dasyu Dharma Bihi. As Kali Yuga advances, we can see that these characteristics are already visible. We can certainly imagine how deteriorated human civilization will be by the end of Kali Yuga. Indeed, there will no longer be a sane man capable of understanding God and our relationship with Him. In other words, human beings will be just like animals. At that time, in order to reform human society, Lord Krishna will come in the form of the Kalki avatar. His business will be to kill all the atheist kings because ultimately the real protector is Vishnu or Krishna. The Lord, incarnate, the, lid, the Lord incarnates and sets things in order when things are mismanaged by so-called kings and heads of government. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yada yada hi dharmasya 
Kalanya, Bhavati Bharata. Of course, this takes many years, but the principle is there. When the king or governmental head does not follow the proper principles, nature deals out the punishments in the forms of war, famine, and so forth. Therefore, if the governmental head is not aware of life's goal, he should not take charge of ruling the people. Actually, the supreme proprietor of everything is Lord Vishnu. He is the maintainer of everyone. The king Hmm. I'll start from the beginning of this purport. I got distracted by the messages that were coming from my, from my computer. The Lord incarnates and sets things in order when things are mismanaged by so-called kings and heads of government. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yada, Yada, Hidharmasya, Glanir, Bhavati, Bharata. Of course, this takes many years, but the principle is there. When the king or governmental head does not follow the proper principles, nature deals out the punishments in the forms of war, famine, and so forth. Therefore, if the governmental head is not aware of life's goal, he should not take charge of ruling the people. Actually, the supreme proprietor of everything is Lord Vishnu. He is the maintainer of everyone. The king, the father, and the guardian are simply representatives of Lord Vishnu, empowered by him to look after the management and maintain things. It is therefore the duty of the head of the state to maintain the general populace in such a way that people will ultimately know the goal of life. Nate vidu svartakatim hi vishnum. Unfortunately, the foolish governmental head and the general populace do not know that the ultimate goal of life is to understand and approach Lord Vishnu. Without this knowledge, everyone is in ignorance and all society is crowded with cheaters and cheated. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And that brings us to 7.46. Time to end our reading for tonight. And we'll start tomorrow at text 8. In the meantime, we pray that we will have some reflection to relish. Thank you. Hare Krishna. First, we have one from Sudevi Dasi. Yes, Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sudevi Dasi, I only have two words for you. Hare Krishna. Back to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. From Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Jai Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Srimad Bhagavatam. Happy Balaram Sarad Purnima. Jai Balaram Dauji. Yes, Jai Balaramji. Yes, he has his gopis. A different set of gopis than Krishna's. And he dances rasa dance just like Krishna does with, a, with a, a separate set of gopis. Hare Krishna. She says Balaram Rasa Purnima. Yes. And Bhakta Brian? Yes, Bhakta Brian. Hare Krishna Maharaj, good to see you again. All Thank glories you. to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, glories to Prabhupada. Rati, she says Jai Guru Maharaj. Jai Rati. Another one from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. I shall always disobey my mind and strictly follow the instructions of sadhu, guru, and shastras, and fix my mind at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, serving humbly devotees, Harinam, and all jivas. 
Hare Krishna, please bless me, dear Maharaj and all assembled Vaishnavas. Jai Ho, may it be so, so be it. And Prabhupada used another word too when it came to how to deal with the mind. Ignore it. <laughs> there are different ways to be insubordinate and one of them is to just ignore it. Whatever the mind tells you to do, keep doing your devotional service. Hare Krishna. She says, daily reading service of Srila Prabhupada's books by Sri Keshava Bharti Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your encouragement. Hare Bo. Katerina Farrell. Katerina Farrell. Hare Krishna. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj from Italy. Thanks. From Italy. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Our, our network is, is growing. Now from Jagamohan Das. Yes, Jagamohan. Hare Krishna, dearest Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my respectful obeisances. This chapter forces me to reflect on my relationship with my mind and the material world at large. I love how Srila Prabhupada explains how the attachments of the mind are what cause a false sense of intimacy within the material world, mm -hmm. and how our best weapon is to disobey our mind and its nonsensical ramblings. Yes. These teachings are so profound, yet often the exact opposite of how society is influenced to behave. To me, it can feel as though we are living in an opposite world of sorts. Just like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 269, what is night for all beings is the time of awakening yes. for the self-controlled. Yes. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. Thank you for your reading. Thank you for reading and association. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you for that very profound realization. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Well, we have to remember also that Krishna tells us in Bhagavad Gita directly that the mind can be the best friend or it can be the worst enemy. When it's controlled, it is the best friend. Then we can uh, associate with it. If it wants to hear about Krishna, if it wants to serve Krishna, if it wants to serve the Vaishnavas, if it wants to spread this beautiful uh, philosophy of Krishna consciousness and practical activity of devotional service to others, then the mind is our best friend and then we don't have to ignore it or disobey it. So let us make our, our minds our friends. We have one from Jamarari. Yes, Gemma. Just cut the end of this. We'll reply now. Just saying thanks, Guru Maharaj. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Gemma. Hare Bo. And from Rati. Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Jai Srila Prabhupada. I am just now flying in from our weekly Bhaktivedanta reading circle in which sensitive topics came up, which we dove into longer than normal. Thank you for reading. I will listen to it later. Hare Krishna, thank you. Yes, sensitive topics. Whenever devotees start to talk, to discuss quote-unquote sensitive topics, then generally it becomes an atmosphere a little more confused than before. Anyway, thank you for sparing us the details. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone, very much. Uh, Krishna willing, I'll be with you again tomorrow night. I'm trying to find the balance where I can keep my uh, health and be productive and at the same time uh, read to you like I want to do, uh, most of all. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.
Samabeda Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow, hopefully, by Krishna's mercy, if he's willing. Uh, and we'll continue to hear the profound uh, instructions of Jad Bharat to Maharaj Hurana, which is applicable to every one of us. Hare Krishna.